Well, hello there, and welcome to this episode of The Terry Cole Show. In today's video, I want to help you get more of what you want in this life. So many of you write into me and say, I'm frustrated, I want this relationship, or I want more success, or I want more abundance. And so I just decided I would do an entire episode on how you can get more of what you want in this life. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through six steps that I use in my life that I teach to my clients for you to intentionally create what you want in your life with mindfulness, right? By by really harnessing the mind-blowing power of your own intention. So before we get moving, if you happen to be new here, please introduce yourself in the comments because we are a friendly bunch. Um, I love that you guys are here. Make sure that you subscribe and you hit that bell icon so that you don't miss anything because I roll out new stuff every Tuesday and every Thursday and everything I create is for you specifically. So I wouldn't want you to miss it since I made it for you. All right, so let's move on into how can you create more of what you want in the world? Hitting it in today's content. Let's start with, before we can figure out what we need to create, we need to figure out what the problem is. We need to figure out where are we in terms of feeling satisfied in life. So the first thing you're going to do is basically a satisfaction inventory. So, and I'll have this for you in the guide, so don't worry, terrycole.com forward slash guide, where you're going to go through all of the main areas of your life. So that's health and wellness, that's finances, that's career and work if you have a career, that is um, romance, that is family, all, all the things. So we'll have a list for you. And you're going to decide what, where are you unsatisfied? What is not working for you in those areas of your life? You're going to write it down because part of what happens is my therapy clients will come to me. They're, they're feeling unsatisfied, but they're not sure why or they're not sure about what. And in order to create what you want, you have to be really clear about what you don't want, what isn't working, right? What isn't your thing? What isn't filling you up? What isn't lighting you up? We need to know that before we can create it. So the first step is going through a satisfaction inventory that I walk you through in the guide off the top of your head while you're watching this or listening to the podcast. Do you know where you feel unsatisfied in your life. Right now, just thinking about it, do you know where you feel unsatisfied? Most of us do. You know, we always have an ongoing, at least I usually do, have an ongoing list of, oh, things I want to be better at or things I want to do more of or things that need to change. But if you really want things to change, you need to be super clear about what are the deal breakers for you. Like what is really not working and what are you willing to do? So the second step is going to be admitting what you actually do want. If you're having difficulty, let's say, in your relationship, or maybe you're in a relationship and you know you're in the wrong relationship, even though there might not be anything wrong with that person at all, down deep in your heart, you might know they're not your person. I mean, I think we've all been in that situation before. It feels terrible. I don't know why. When it was me, I felt like a horrible person, like simply because the person, there was nothing wrong with them. It's like, I felt like I needed a reason to end the relationship. Like they needed to be bad to me or they needed to do something to me. And that's not true, right? There doesn't have to be anything wrong with the other person for them to be wrong for you. So again, you have to admit what you want, which is the second step, which is really getting clear the, your life. How do you want it to be? Think about a year from now. Think about five years from now. How do you want your life to look? What do you do on a daily basis? What are you surrounded by? Where are you living? Who's in your life? How are you spending your time? How much money are you making? All of these things, like we can't just, as my friend David G would say, you know, get up, grind through the day, go to bed and wake up and do it all over again. We have to be mindful in these pursuits. We have to be mindful and have a certain amount of self-awareness and self-reflection about how do I really feel? 
what do I really want? And it might be around your career. It might be around work. It might be around education. Maybe you really want to go back to school. Maybe you really want to switch careers. And I'm not saying that you have to make these changes, even if you realize them, but it really is important for you to know where you are, what you, to admit to yourself what you want in this life. So that's number two. Number three, we really now have to move into, if we figure out what we might want, then we have to go, am I willing to do what it takes? When I was switching careers, I, there was lots of reasons why I was hesitating to switch from being a talent agent, where I was very masterful, and I was also making a lot of money. You know, it was kind of a, a bit of a shiny career, because celebrities and supermodels and all that stuff. And I had to look at myself and say, I knew I wasn't happy in the business anymore. But it wasn't until I hit the tipping point, I couldn't stay where I was anymore. The pain of staying in an unsatisfying career became greater than my fear of leaving. And then I had to make the assessment, am I willing to do what is required for me to become a therapist? which was to work basically full-time and, and be in grad school at the same time and live in New York City and be supporting myself. And I didn't have any money in the bank or anything. I was just, you know, even though I had made a lot of money, I did not, I was not very fiscally responsible. I just traveled and did whatever the hell I want. So by the time I went to grad school, I was like, wow, I literally think I had $900 in the bank. That was not a lot of money. But I was willing to do what was required. And I also knew I would land on my feet because I always do. I was like, you'll find a way. There's always more where that came from, as my friend Marie Forleo would say about money. But I knew that even when I was younger, I was never that great at managing money, but I was always very adept at making money. I also was always a hard worker and willing to work to make the money. So I found a way you know, to, to sort of make that work, but I couldn't have taken that next step. I couldn't have gotten what I wanted, which was a career change, if I wasn't actually willing to go to grad school. I mean, I was obviously, well, not obviously, but I was terrified to do it. I hadn't been in school. I hadn't been in college in almost a decade. I didn't go to a good college. I went to like a pretty average undergraduate school. And then I got accepted into NYU. And I was like, oh my God, I guess I'm going to grad school because I can't, I got in, I got to go, right? So there was a lot going there, but at least that that brought me to the next step. So I did the three steps that I'm telling you about satisfaction inventory. No, I was not satisfied. Admitting what I wanted. I really wanted to become a therapist, even though nobody in my life understood why I would want to become a therapist. Why would I give up all the money and all the glitz and all the glamour to become a therapist? I didn't care. I was like, yeah, that's really what I want though. And then the third thing, the discernment, what am I willing to do? What is required? And the answer was yes, even though I wasn't even positive, but I was willing to figure it out right? And this is what you want to ask yourself. Are you willing to figure out what it is? For some people, it might be ending a relationship, right? Because you could wake up and 15 years goes by. If this is you, if you know you're in a relationship that is not the right one for you, please let this episode be the power pivot in your life. Give yourself permission to want what you want, even if that is to be alone. Like you don't have to suffer. That other person, they'll be sad. They'll be okay, right? But this is your one and only life this time around. And you can't sacrifice it for someone else's happiness or, be, or prioritize what someone else wants above what you want, right? What you want matters. If you need to get out of a relationship, and especially if it's an unhealthy or a dangerous relationship, of course, don't just leave, obviously. I have blogs on this, how to leave safely. If you're just in a relationship that's not abusive, that's not scary, that's not dangerous, but you're just not in love, give yourself permission to make a plan to exit because you have the right to be happy. So if you've been looking for a sign let's and you're listening to this podcast or you're watching this on YouTube, hey. Let this be the sign. What you want, how you feel, what you think. Your heart's desire matters, and it's got to matter 
to you, really more than anyone else's heart's desire. Your own heart's desire has to matter the most to you if you're going to live your life your way in a really real way. All right, the fourth is using creative visualization. Now, this has been around since forever, right? The book came out in the 70s, and I talk about it often because it is such an impactful experience in my life, this book itself. Once you do the first couple of steps, you should be able to start visualizing your life. Start visualizing. I would start to visualize myself in my own therapy office, being booked. When I had only one client, I only had one client to start from my internship that came with me. I was charging them $40 a session. This was many years ago. But I would, every night, visualize having a super packed schedule, full. I visualized having more than one office. I visualized having sub-therapists underneath me. And all of those things eventually happened in my career. But part of it is I needed to see it, to know the direction I was going to go in. I didn't know how I was going to do that. But you know that Martin Luther King quote that's like, you don't need to see all the whole entire staircase, you just need to see the first step. I know I just butchered that quote, but basically you guys know what I'm talking about. Knowing what you want, being willing to do the work, right? Being in it to win it basically for yourself, being willing to do whatever it takes and visualizing. And when you visualize, you don't just see the thing. You see the thing and you feel the feelings of already having it. You may not understand why I'm saying that. You may think that's weird. That's okay. I'm telling you it's important that this is the part that I think really there maybe is some magical element to it. I I, I I hesitate to say the word magic. I hesitate to say the word manifest. I hesitate on all these things because this is not the stuff that I normally talk about. But if you want to know what I actually do in my real life to achieve the things that I achieve, I use creative visualization. And that includes feeling the feelings of having the things I want long before I actually have them. So all of this, don't worry, is going to be in the guide for you. Nothing to sweat. We've, we've you know, written it all out. You don't have to take notes. Just be present. If this is speaking to you, this might be a really pivotal and important moment in your life. So allow yourself to be here now. The next thing for you to do, the next step, which is step five, is to break down everything into actionable steps. Be committed to doing at least one thing every day towards your goals. And it's got to be one thing besides visualizing and feeling the feelings, right? Break it down into actionable tasks. Put those tasks in your calendar. There is a difference. I was just interviewing a friend of mine, Jocelyn Herman Saccio, if you guys watched that interview, and she was talking about, you know, someday, right? Like, I'm going to do that someday. And it's nice to have long-term dreams like that if you want to think about what you want to do when you retire, or maybe you're only 30. But if you actually want something to happen in concrete real life, like real, real time, real life, you need to have some kind of a plan. It doesn't have to be exact. You just have to be going in the right direction. So look at what you need to do. Perhaps if it's leaving a relationship and it's a safe relationship to leave, think about your timing. Think about where are you intertwined with this person. Think about where can you start to slowly but surely make moves within yourself before you say anything, before you reveal anything. I mean, if you're sure the relationship is done, right? Or get committed to having a conversation, perhaps getting into therapy together. If the only thing you've ascertained in your satisfaction inventory is that you're unsatisfied, but maybe you haven't really tried. Maybe you don't know this isn't the right relationship for you, but you still need to take action because everything changes, but it only changes when you do, right? When we want a different result, we have to be the one who takes a different tact, who does something different If we do the same crap every day, we end up with the same results every day. So we got to do something different. And 
The last, and listen, every single one of these is super important, but the last step is for you to actively rock gratitude for what you already have, like it's your friggin' job, like it's actually your job. I know we all overestimate how grateful we are. I can promise you, daily gratitude, nightly gratitude, verbalizing it with my husband, writing in my friggin' journal, finding things to be grateful for left and right. This is my, like, my job in life. There are so many things to be grateful for, but I know that when I am in this, the energy, the vibration of gratitude, good things happen. I'm open. I start to see these synchrotastic happenings. I start to see, as you know, Deepak Chopra would say, meaningful coincidences in my life. And part of the way that I stay in so much gratitude is with mindfulness practices because it slows everything down. My daily meditation, my breathing, right? My, my friend Sam Skelly has amazing breathing app called Pause breathing app. And it's amazing. Get it on the app store. Um, she also has a brand new, just plugging for my friend because she's so awesome. She has a brand new um, podcast called Cannot Be Contained, which I think you would really love. She is, wow, a firecracker, very inspirational. Anyway, back to we're rocking gratitude. So with gratitude, we're going to have mindfulness practices because they're so important. But gratitude itself can change your mood right, can change what's happening for you. And I swear that me having the level of gratitude that I have on a daily basis changes what happens in my life. And I do all the other things, right? I do all of these six steps that I just shared with you. This is my own personal, how I get more of what I want in my life is taking these steps in this order. But gratitude is something that I want you to flex that muscle every single solitary day throughout the day, because it is the biggest game changer of all. So don't forget to go get the guide that I made for you, terrycole.com forward slash guide. I hope that this episode and that this strategy to help you to walk you through how to get more of what you want in your life really added value to your life. I hope it inspired you. Let me know if it did. You know where I hang out? Follow me on Instagram, put a picture of something that you're doing or you listening to the pod in your story and I or post it and I will repost it. I'd just love to know that I am out here with you and that we are together. And when you post stuff on Instagram, it makes me know that I'm not doing this in a vacuum. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys have the most amazing week. And as always, take care of you. Thank you so much for all of your questions and your comments. I read them all, as you guys know. And I'd love to highlight them. So under the video, Seven Steps to Start to Heal the Mother Wound, uh, Gringa Cooking Chronicles says, can you just be my mom? L-M-A-O. <laughs> Thank you so much for the videos you post. I'm unable to afford insurance or trauma therapy out of pocket. So these really help me. You're a freaking rock star for helping so many people. I can't say thanks enough. Ah, oh, Gringa. You're welcome. I'm so happy that you are here and that it is helping 